This is the St. Louis Blues Face-Off Show. Now, here's your hosts, Jeff Ponder and Mike Pepping. All right, here we are at another Face-Off Show. As always, I'm Mike Pepping. And I am Jeff Ponder. And we're here to talk some blues. First blues off. Is. That's a pretty good streak there, Mike. Great streak. Went 7-1. and one. I mean, can't be mad about that at this time of the season. Bernie Federko said it on the post-game show the other night. If you can win seven of your eight games every single time, you're going to end up with a great record. So That's, great. Uh, I would love to be able to do the math on that, but I don't think I can throughout a full season. Nope, not going to do Let's it. Let's just say that something like 70 wins. 70 plus wins, I'll take it. I don't think it. that's going to happen. I'll take it, though. <laughs> yeah, I would too. Uh, you know, this, this streak showed us a lot of things. I think it showed that uh, our goaltending was pretty strong. A uh, little shaky in the game against uh, Nashville, but... Tarasenko, that's obviously the big Tara one. Snipe show, that as guy, we've been saying forever here on the Faceoff Show. Oh, my goodness. This guy has just been crazy, Mike. I mean, this guy's skating up the wing, shooting and scoring, bringing up the middle, shooting and scoring, pulling goalies out of their creases, swimming all over the place just to try and stop his shot. Jocks are in Can't the corner. Do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. He's just he's a, he's a multifaceted threat. He's got everything in the game that you could want. He's playing like Datsuk. He's shooting like Ovi. And he's back checking like somebody that's American. So like, <laughs> that's right. The best that of that every Russian world. stereotype has definitely gone away with this guy. He oh is, yeah. Uh, he has been great in the offensive zone. He's great in the neutral zone. We're seeing everything from him, but not just him. No, his, no. His line mate, Yori Laterra. Yori Laterra. Fantastic. Oh my gosh, they had such great chemistry in the KHL for the two years they played over there. Uh, Tarasenko comes over. We get the option to bring in Laterra. Thank goodness he's here. He's just lighting the lamp right and left. I mean, what can you say about this guy that's bad? Well, nothing. That's exactly. the answer. Uh, he he scored his third goal against the Nashville Predators, only goal of the game for the Blues. But uh, you know, on a beautiful play from Tarasenko. Of course, of course. But Laterra, you know, eleven points in his first thirteen NHL games. That's pretty impressive. He's not going to be able to win the Calder because he is not qualified as a rookie by NHL standards. Boo. Too old. But but he has played very, very good hockey, showing that uh, his experience in the KHL and other leagues uh, is really paying dividends for him here in the NHL. Absolutely. And, you know, they've got another great compliment in Jaden Schwartz. Yes. Oh, my gosh. The kid, he's been great this year. He was kept off the score sheet for a little bit when he was getting flip-flop lines uh, when Oshie and Backus went down. Stassi was already out. That's but now happen. he Exactly. And he's settling back in with the Laterasenko combination. And it's just, I mean, it's looking great. They cycle well. They get to the net. They chip. They shoot from off angles. And it keeps teams guessing. And when you got somebody like Tarasenko, like we already talked about, really helps. But it's because his line mates allow him to do that. Yeah, Schwartz is a guy that really draws defenders to him and lets his uh, teammates get open for him. Uh, he's a guy that works the puck really well in the corners. And let's be honest, Mike, me, you, and every Blues fan out there was dreaming of this line being the Blues' top line, whether it's now or in five years. And I think that's what we're seeing. Jaden Schwartz, uh, he's just a fantastic puck mover. Um, he's not getting the points, I think, that everyone thought he would by this time of year. I mean, he is second on the team with 12 points, but they've kind of come in spurts. He's been kind of kept off the score sheet here and there. But he's still playing solid hockey. He's one other guy like Tarasenko who back checks really well, doesn't give up on plays. He loses the puck. He's the first one to get back to that puck and take that puck back. So He's also very Datsuk-esque. Yes. I think that this line is something that uh, Hitchcock's wanting to keep together. I know he's a line shuffler, but uh, I see these guys staying together for a while. I agree. And, you know, it only means great things for the team in the long term. Another guy that filled in well on that line when uh, Schwartz had moved up, it was Tarasenko, Laterra, and then Alex Steen. And he's had Steen, kind of, of a rocky start, but he's been looking more dialed in as of late. Took him a few strides, a couple periods to get into play on Saturday night versus Nashville. But overall, I mean, he's been really stepping it up. He's coming into his own right now, and now he's back with Stastny and Bacchus, and they're making things happen. Yeah, we saw Steen have a really big year last year. Everybody remembers that. He was our big sniper throughout the season. 
uh, except for when he was injured, of course. But, uh, you know, he's playing a, a, a very two-way role that we've seen him play over the years. Before last year, he was always kind of that guy that would fill in on a line whenever you needed him to. And that's kind of what he's been again this season. He's a guy that can shoot the puck. Uh, sometimes you might want him to hit the net a little more, but a guy who shoots that hard, it's not always going to be accurate. And uh, as you said, you know, he's he played really well on that line earlier in the year. He was creating plays for Laterra and Tarasenko to get open, or as I like to call them, Laterasenko. La and, uh, you know, now we're seeing this mixture of a line with Cole Stastny and David Backus. Um, something I think that's really going to work out. This is a line that I was asking for when they first signed Stastny. All American. We're seeing it. Not, we not really. Steen's not. I know. I'm talking close. about oh, originally we were talking oh, about T.J. Oshie. Oh, oh Oshie. All American. American. Yes, of course. Yeah. And Mike just saluted. Just for those <laughs> that know. Uh, America. But, but yeah, uh, that's a line I think that's going to really work out. A lot of people don't like moving Backus from center. I like him at center, but I like him more at right wing, and I think this is really going to help this line, and uh, Stassi's going to have two guys that he can find uh, crashing the net at all times. Absolutely. You move Bacchus to the wing, it might be a little slow for a couple games, but it means success overall for the team. He's still going to get in those dirty areas. He has Stasny now with great hockey IQ, incredible vision, feeding him in the slot. And it's, you know, it's just going to work out. Steen is there to pick up, you know, uh, pucks in high-scoring areas and just fire him on net. And you know what, Steen, you can't knock the guy. He's had a slow start, but he's got eight points in the 14 games we've played. And he's a plus two on a roster that sees a ton of minuses right now. So he's doing something right, and he's doing it for 200 feet. You mentioned the minuses on this team, Mike. What name stands out to you most right now that has a minus rating? Oh, unfortunately, it's the guy we are expecting to contribute the most to the team in a positive way, Alex Petrangelo. Our rock-solid blue liners looking more like pebbles right now. Ooh, I get it. It's a Flintstones right <laughs> Oh, hey! Look at that. Bringing it out bam, tonight. Bam, bam. Uh, he is actually currently sitting at a minus five on the year, and he's just, uh, he's had troubles. He's had a rough go at it. There's been some bad bounces uh, around him. I don't think he's played that terrible overall, but he's definitely not contributing on offense like we need him to, and it's showing up in the plus-minus column. Yeah, we've seen a couple bad plays go against him. We all remember the... Uh, game-winning goal in the first game of the season against the Rangers. That bad bounce off the partition. Uh, he's, he's just had some bad luck, but really I've always said, and I think a lot of people say this, you create your own luck. And uh, Got to keep those feet moving. Yeah, just got to keep going. You got to keep trying, keep pushing, and uh, he'll get back to where he, we expect him to be. But uh, a guy that I thought has played well is his defensive partner. I think Jay Bowmeister the last Jay I'd say great. about the last 10 games has been great. First, oh, a yeah. little rocky start, I think, for him as well, but uh, he's picked it up, and uh, I think he's really been the catalyst for that pairing. I agree, and hopefully he ignites Alex Petrangelo, and they get uh, some better bounces in front of him and, uh, you know, get better on the score sheet. No easy transition, but uh, as we said, the Blues did lose to the Predators on Saturday. Upstart Predators team, something I think that not a lot of people saw coming. They uh, they have a new coach in Peter Laviolette. Uh, they really brought it hard. Pecorine, the longtime Blues killer, played very well. But what did you see from the Blues that you didn't like on Saturday night? Um, well, you know, you could tell that they were feeling the effects of four games and six nights. Their legs just went out before the third period was over. They couldn't play full 60 minutes, and they, as they got tired, they started making more mistakes, and Nashville ended up uh, capitalizing on them. Well, there's one person I think that would definitely agree with you, and that is head coach Ken Hitchcock. We looked slow. We looked slow in the head and slow in the feet, and we made a lot of tired plays with the puck. We had... Too many mistakes, uh, too many tired mistakes, or, you know, I'm quite frankly, we're, we're sitting on one line doing everything for us right now. We, we're going to need a lot more from people if we expect to, uh, to be good in this, in this division. Before we can even start producing, we've got to spend more time in the offensive zone. So we're going to, th those guys know they can play better, and they know they're going to have to play better. But I think when you become a one-line club, like happened today, teams sit on you, and we don't want to become a one-line club. we got more than that. Well, thanks for the input, Coach Hitchcock. Uh, Always a pleasure. <laughs> yes. Oh, he walked out of the room already. He has nothing else to contribute to the show. Well, uh, we want to introduce a new segment to the show this week, and that is our St. Louis Blues Lounge Fan Poll. St. Now, Louis Blues Lounge hashtag face-off show fan poll. If, if you're not uh, aware of what the St. Louis Blues, Blues Lounge is, Blues. it is a Facebook group that it's, it's just a lot of great fans. They talk hockey the whole time. 
Check them out during games. They're a lot of Fan fun. Fan reactions. Yes. We're all about that here on the Facebook show. Face we, off show. Face off show. On wow. Facebook. <laughs> yeah, check us out on Facebook. We're talking about the Facebook group. You know, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes ADD works against you. Here of course, of course. But or, check it out. Great group. Great guys. They know their stuff. They have great get-togethers all over the area. And uh, you know, like us, we like them. So like them too. Yeah. So here is our first official St. Louis Blues Lounge fan poll. We asked. How many goals will Vladimir Tarasenko score this year? And at 62%, we had 36 to 45 goals. So that's pretty fair. 36 to 45. I called 40. You called 40. We're I think everyone agrees with 40. Us. Absolutely. You know, I'd be happy with 42 to 78. Yeah, that's somewhere in there. <laughs> Maybe breaking the record. Yeah. The record, that'd be nice at 92. Uh, but at your second place was 26 to 35 at 22%. 46 plus goals at 14 percent, and then under 25 goals. Some fool said. Who 1%. said that? Who are you? Why are you in the group? Why did you vote? Must not be a blue spin. Yeah. <laughs> Must not know your stuff. We also had a great fan comment that we had to share with everybody. Andy DeClue, member of St. Louis Blues Lounge, he says, "What's really fun to watch is he's not one-dimensional. Talking about Tarasenko, obviously, he can beat you from anywhere." Whether it's setting up for a quick one-timer, beating you with a quick wrister, sniping a corner, deking everyone out, or anything else, he's got it covered. And we agree with you, Andy, and that's what makes him so fierce. We talked about it already. He's got so many dimensions to his game, and he gets it at such a high level. It's just unbelievable to yeah, watch. Yeah, that guy, is uh, he's just dynamic. He does everything right. We've already talked about him on this show. And Andy, uh, you're reading the game right. I think you got it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks, everyone, for chiming in this week. That's going to do it for this show. That's all this week on the Face Off Show. But as always, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook. Just use that hashtag, Face Off Show, and we'll definitely retweet you. We'll chat with you. We'll answer your questions, send them in, and, uh, you know, for a chance to be on the show. Definitely. And also, do not want to miss our boys in action this week as they play Tuesday at home. All these games are at home against the Buffalo Sabres. Thursday, a rematch with the Predators. And Saturday, Alexander Ovechkin is in town as the Washington Capitals come to Scott Trade. So some good Busy games week. to watch this week, and uh, we'll have another show for you this week as well. Absolutely. Can't wait. Have a good night, guys. We only got one thing left to do. Let's, Let's go, go Blues! Thanks for listening to the St. Louis Blues Face-Off Show. You can find Jeff and Mike's writing on the St. Louis Blues page of KSDK.com. And be sure to follow them on Twitter at jponder94 and at pep30 and on the hashtag faceoffshow.